What's up everyone, Super Nerd Daniel coming at you with episode 5 of Life is Strange True Colors. In the last episode, Jed shot us and left us for dead in a fucking mine. I mean, <laughs> that that that's just fucked up. I mean, I had my suspicions because again, I, I took the whole fact that he was the surprise villain of the LARP from episode 3 as like foreshadowing, but I didn't want to be right, man. I mean, yeah, there was also the Spring Festival and getting to play a song on stage with Steph and then getting to kiss Steph, which was fucking rad. I don't know how much it's going to amount to now because I don't even know how we're going to make it out of this situation that I found myself in. Shot by a gun and then dumped into a fucking ventilation shaft in a mine, which I assume I'm only going to survive because of my main character plot armor. But, I mean... <sighs> You know, <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, but anyway, thank you to Square Enix and Rainmaker GG for providing me the code to download this game to play for you guys here on the channel. Really appreciate that. And without further ado, let's jump into episode five. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Welcome back, Alex. What? Do you want to talk about your time? Excuse in me? Uh, okay, this has got to be like a dream sequence, right? Let's Slash something positive. the effects of the concussion that I what surely have from being thrown into a vent shaft. Ooh, okay. Um, I, I don't want to say nothing. Because that would be a lie. It was, it was a mixed bag. Um, so it's either square or circle for me, and I think I've been focusing a lot on Alex's emotions, and also emotions that have been having a big effect on this playthrough, because of some of the choices I've made, so, um, I think we'll say that. I learned to let myself feel, I guess. And to not be afraid of those feelings. Couldn't one argue that those old fears turned out to be justified? Mm. What? I mean, do you yes and no. That friction. It's a yes and no thing. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm definitely concussed. I do for trying. You helped some people. Chased a mystery. Got to kiss a pretty girl. True. But Alex, you're right back where you started. Oh, no, I'm not. Because this isn't real. This isn't real. I know my storytelling tropes. You're wrong. I don't belong in here. Hell yeah, you don't. If that were true, Alex, you'd know you were talking to an empty chair. Uh, what? Okay. I am officially spooked. Appropriate, because it's October. What the fuck? Should probably try and get a, get a feel for my surroundings. Uh... Also, can we talk about the emotion board with Alex's face on it? Because that's a little bit weird. Is that what I look like? Really? God, I hope not. It's a pretty oversimplification of human emotion. Oh, hello, guitar case? Hey, my guitar. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, do I have to... Oh my god, is this is gonna be a, like a knock-knock joke thing or something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, orange. Um, Alex Chen? That was my next guess. My guitar case has never heard of me. Sure. Wow. 
Huh. Oh boy. Nothing that the Life is Strange games love more than a secret passcode to unlock a thing. Because that'll be somewhere around here in the room. I'm assuming I can't leave, but like, just to see. Of course. Sure. Sure. Why not? Why not just take away the doorknob? Sure. That's fine. That, that's totally fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, there's a couple things over here I'd be interested in. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, I guess we'll go with the tape recorder? Up. Dr. Lin always recorded our... Records our sessions. This is not in present tense, Alex. This is not reality. You are not back at helping hands. Get a grip. Fuck off, Jed. You can't undo. Alex, you know that I care about you. But oh, God. Yeah, no, just, just keep reminding me of all the things that make me sad. Cool. Love that for me. I assume if I play that again, it'll just be a repeat of the ones I just heard. So let's look at the folder. If I can. There we go. Jesus, with these lights. I guess that's me. Oh. Case number 53322. I'm going to guess that's the number for the guitar case. Uh, ooh. Let's have a look in here, though. Alexandra Alex Chen, 21. Symptoms. Emotional instability. Occasional violent outbursts. Hallucinations. Visual. Hallucinations. Aural. Delusional ideation. Depression. Anxiety. Diagnosis. I don't fucking know. Alex experiences a detailed and robust delusion that she is able to read other people's emotional states and believes that, because of this ability, she is uniquely equipped to help others overcome their own emotional trauma. It's difficult to overlook the irony. Someone as profoundly dysfunctional as Alex adopting the role of emotional caretaker. Oof. Jesus. Notes with the personal attacks. Had she not been returned to my care, I do not think it hyperbolic to speculate that her reckless attempts at fixing her friends and family would eventually have gotten someone hurt. It's my belief that Alex's delusions constitute a threat to her continued well-being, as well as those of others. As such, I recommend Alex be thrown down an endless pit, her body shattered against each jutting board and errant brick, until she is forgotten in the darkness beneath the world. This, in my professional opinion, is the most humane thing we can do for her. Okay, that sounds metal as fuck, but uh, also, what? Fucking excuse you, Dr. Wynn. I am, uh, not on board with this plan. What was it? 53322, two, two, right? So, 3322. This is. This is fucked. This is already so fucked. Especially because it's obviously the last thing that Alex wanted was to, be, was to be back here at Helping Hands, getting fucking analyzed by Dr. Lin, who, if you remember from me checking out the text in episode one, I guess we'll try to play it. Oh, we're missing a peg. Well, that sucks. But if you remember from uh, episode one, 
that uh, Dr. Lin had actually been blocked in Alex's phone contacts. Why is there... Okay, there's a picture of a tuning peg, but more importantly, why are there Alex's family photos here? That is weird. What the fuck, Dr. Please Lin? Don't belong to Dr. Lin. Yeah, no shit. Seriously, why do you have these photos in here, Dr. Lin? Tuning peg. Uh, I'm getting text messages in this nightmare sequence? Hello? Oh, it's a bunch of stuff on my block, and they're all from Dr. Lin. I'm assuming it's, uh, you know, most recent is up here, so I guess we'll start at the bottom one. ISO, one missing patient, answers to Alex. She was always scratching at the door, trying to get out, but she's declawed, so her capacity to fend for herself is minimal. Creepy. If spotted, please exercise caution when approaching. She will appear friendly and normal, but we've had some behavioral issues in the past. Please help me find my patient. I'm starting to get really worried. The poster has disabled replies. Attention residents, please join me in welcoming Alex Chen back to Helping Hands. We're happy, though not surprised, that Alex has once more submitted herself to the stultifying and inescapable embrace of our institution. The poster has disabled replies. In light of all the recent excitement, now is a good time to remind Helping Hands residents that impulses to leave our institution, while understandable, are best resisted. Remember, the outside world is sharp-toothed and possessed of an insatiable hunger, and you are soft and slow and appetizing. What the fuck? Why throw yourself into its mouth? Throw yourself instead into mine. Okay. Um, one, again, metal as fuck. But two, what the fuck? And three, that's really reminding me of the poem that you can hear, like, Ophelia saying on your way to the Sea of Black Tears in Brutal Legend. Also, has anyone else on the planet ever played Brutal Legend aside from me? Because I feel like I'm the only one. I don't know what taking the photo of the tuning peg is going to do, unless that somehow leads to... Of course it did. <laughs> of course it did. Why not? It's it's the nightmare sequence, of course. That somehow makes sense. What if there's any significance to these uh to these drawings? Like the one on the right obviously I think is meant to both be like a tree and a hand, although that could just be someone like Putting their hand and forearm, like, in a thing of paint and then just putting it on the page. The one on the left is obviously a dog. I wonder what the one in the middle is. I could be really overanalyzing these and it's just like, it's just children's drawings. I suppose I can't play it until I fix it. But let's try anyway. Steals a single tuning peg. It was worth a shot. Valid question, though. Seriously, though, it it really it really is fucked that we're starting back here. I've said this before, but this does seem to take a lot of story beats from the original Life is Strange, uh, and now we're in a nightmare sequence in the final episode. Kind of wondering if this one's going to be as long as the original then. But it does seem to have a lot of the same elements, you know, just throwing Alex's fears and insecurities back in her face. And is she crying blood? Nope. Nope, that's just, that's just a head wound. That's just a straight-up head wound. And that's kind of gross. Guess we're about to, uh, snap back to reality. Yup. Once again, only survived because we are the main character, because that looked like a hell of a drop. 
question is, how the fuck do we get back? Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a broken rib. That's probably a few broken ribs. Oh, 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 I see. We landed on a suspended uh. plank. Which is probably the only reason we didn't fall even further to absolute rock bottom and just crack our skulls. I'm saying R as if it's me and Alex. It's clearly just Alex. Also, this is a dire situation. I should probably be paying attention. Shit! Yeah, so about that not falling to rock bottom thing, um... Might have spoken too soon. Oh my god, we're back in the fucking nightmare! Ugh. Great. Yeah, no, this is fine. This is... This is what I wanted. Alex. Oh my god. Gabe? <gasps> Ooh, he seems distant. You're dead. So? Lots of people are dead, Alex. Most people. I mean, that's we? technically true, but like... I want to say... A hospital? Dr. Certainly Mendez looks like one. Intensive care. Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Yep, definitely a hospital. Gabe. Okay, here's what I do know. You are 10, I am 14. Our mother is sick, so is our father. But it's a different kind of sickness. Play your part. Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. Oh, Lord. That doesn't look like Alex, good news. Go check on your mother. This really does not seem like okay. it's going to be good news. She was right over there. Waiting for me. Yeah, so, uh... Probably not gonna go in there yet because I feel like that's how we progress, and uh, you know I should probably you know get a, get a lay of the land. Also, what the fuck are we doing reliving childhood trauma? There it is, the painting that taught me that art sucked sometimes. That looks colorful but confusing. Probably how Alex feels about a lot of her emotions. I would imagine. Gabe and I used to watch cartoons on this thing after school. Wow, so uh, they definitely spent a lot of time in here then if they're familiar. Or if she's at least familiar with this specific TV. So. Yeah, clearly whatever mom's sick with was uh, not a uh, short-term thing. We couldn't afford a private room. Just got lucky, I guess. Mom used to fidget with her keys whenever she was worried. Gabe, Alex, I need you to listen very carefully. We got some scary news today, and I'm going to be spending oh some time at the hospital. What? Mom, are you okay? Hush now, it's going to be okay. Do you understand me? That Things wasn't a yes. Different for a little while. But I am going to be okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and guess you probably weren't okay. Just a hunch. I spent so much time in here that I basically memorized every article. Oh, man. Imagine having only magazines to read. 
Oof. Gabe told me it was full of needles. It scared me to death. I mean, you're probably not incorrect. I mean, there's probably other stuff in there too, like gloves and, you know, like changed bandages and stuff. But yeah, probably a lot of used needles also. It was always too hot in this room. Oh, God, is there anything else I can look at? Because I feel like whatever's going to happen next isn't going to be great. Just looking for any old thing. Nope. Okay. Well, time to confront some shit. Oh boy. Guess let's just have a look around before we talk to mom. How many nights did Dad spend in this room? Sleeping in an uncomfortable chair and eating vending machine dinners. There's something so weird and scary about watching your dad cry. Mom, every time I saw her, I worried it would be the last. Ooh, this is rough. Uh... So, a few years ago, uh, back in like late 2015, um, my grandma actually passed away from cancer. So, this, if this is cancer, which I assume that maybe it is or it's something, you know, similarly terminal, that's, that's kind of a sore spot for me because, uh, my grandma got cancer and then unfortunately she passed away before I was able to actually go see her. So, uh, we spent so much time in this room. Mom's bed was at the far end. Yeah. I wish I could have spent time with my grandma to be honest, but, uh, Oh boy, this is going to be rough. This is going to be real rough. Hi mom. 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 Such a brave girl. How do you ever get so brave? Is that how it went? You don't think you missed anything? Oh, uh, what? Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Oh, God. We're going to have to keep reliving this until she actually remembers how this day went. Oh, fuck me, dude. I am not a fan. I am not a fan. Go check on your mother. God, but this is really what okay. it's like when just, like, terrible and traumatic things happen. You just keep replaying certain events in your head over and over and over and over again. Like, non-stop. So you can't escape it. Did I miss something? I guess if I'm forced to go through this whole thing again, I may as well recheck stuff, I guess? I couldn't afford a private room. Just got lucky, I guess. Okay, so I think the I think the stuff I was looking at before, um, was this was this lit up before and I missed it, or did I swear I would have seen it walking over here? I may have just missed it. I don't know. No matter how much mom drank, 
Her throat was always dry. She knew. Even then, she knew. Gabe and I used to watch cartoons on this thing after school. I don't know if it's going to make me repeat this again if I don't actually interact with everything on a single run. Uh, so we're just doing that real quick. Don't mind me. Because, uh, not going to lie, kind of want to get out of this hospital scene as soon as possible. TBH. It's too hot in this room. Not great. It is not great for me. How many nights did Dad spend in this room? Sleeping in an uncomfortable chair and eating vending machine dinners. Was there anything else? I know I didn't get the tissues again yet, but... Uh, oh, the fucking magazines and the... We spent so in the much bin. time in here that I basically memorized every article. Gabe told me it was full of needles. It scared me to death. There's something so weird and scary about watching your dad cry. Also, can I just say that it's kind of fucked a little bit that they have you, presumably that they have you redo this scene to make sure that you don't miss any interactable when, like, part of the appeal of this series is interacting with everything and making sure you explore everything and look at everything, especially if some innocuous piece of information could make the difference in a later scene. Mom, what am I missing? What did we talk about? Or maybe it just, it could just be that I'm way overthinking that and it just makes you repeat the scene for, you know, the trauma, which is uh, also kind of fucked. Hi, Mom. It could just be Alex trying to remember something specific. Because there was that flash in the middle after Mom started coughing. <coughs> Mom. Mom. Water, Alex. Get her some water. <coughs> Right, water, 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 water. Right here. We got it. All right, go, 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 go. Thank you. You almost never cry. Even when you were very small. Did you know that? That's been my biggest challenge with you. How do you take care of someone who is already so strong? No tears, my strong girl. I want you to make me a promise. Your brother, your father, they are going to need you. You have to be strong. Will you do that, Alex? Oh, it's a pendant. Oh. Such a brave. 
brave girl. How do you ever get so brave? Jesus, dude. I know I should expect this sort of thing by now, but it never makes it any easier when these games just decide to punch you in the heart. And why am I looking at TV static? No, seriously, I think someone needs to go onto the roof and fix the antenna. Oh, I wonder, are we back at... Are we maybe back at Alex's house now? It's definitely after that scene in the hospital, because she, like, she has the... She has the pendant. Yo, is it Halloween? Sick? At least that's one upside to all this. Yeah, okay, this is definitely their house, because that's like... Yeah, that's that's a bunch of their family photos. Oh, hey, is that Shushu? But, like, with the ear intact? Was that the last time you talked to her? Gabe, you really gotta Mom. fucking let me know when you're gonna just pop in like that, man. I... I think so. Do you miss her? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say I do. Gabe, what's going on? Valid question! You're 11, I'm almost 15. Dad and I are time bombs. You keep running back and forth, trying to defuse us both. Okay, I'm sure that's useful for this sequence, but I kind of wanted to know what's going on in general. I already have a general idea, but still. This is going to suck so bad. Play your part. You keep saying that. I don't like it. I really do not like this. There was only ever one thing to do when they got like this. Drown them out and wait for it to pass. Oh, that is too real. The volume dial was my best friend on days like this. It is way too real. Just put on the headphones, pump up the jams, and just try to forget that everything around you is fucking happening. So hell of a song to do this to. Yo, I had kind of been wondering why Alex was always wearing headphones, at least at the very start of the game. But now it makes sense. It's, okay. it's just me. 
because it's something she would do to try and drown out people that were arguing. Just something she would do to drown out the noise in like really stressful situations. It was my job to keep the peace. But no matter what I did. Cleaning Dad's ashtray was not my favorite job in the world. At least I managed to hold on to you, Shu Shu. Dare I check if there's anything on the phone? Oh boy, new journal entry. Oh, this is gonna be sad. Oh, there's actually two entries, okay. And this definitely looks like younger Alex having written this. Alex Chen, age 10, sadness, yep. Today we went back to the hospital because my mom is sick. Our neighbor drove us there because my dad stayed the night with my mom. I wanted to bring my rat Shoo Shoo because I always bring Shoo Shoo when I go to the hospital to see my mom, but I forgot. Mom says I have to take care of my brother and my dad. She used to not be so skinny, but now she is so skinny. I wish she was not so skinny, and I wish she could come home. She gave me a necklace she wears sometimes. Ooh, boy. Alex Chen, age 11, fear. Okay, so this is like a year later. Remember to keep everyone happy. Yeah. Real easy job for an 11-year-old. Homework, vacuum, dust surfaces, organize bills, call pharmacy for dad's blood pressure meds. Oh, boy. Break time, listen to records, five minutes, no more. Start Gabe's laundry, make rice, chop veggies, uh, chop veggies, cook chicken, throw veggies in the pan with chicken, serve Gabe's laundry, wash the dryer, dad's laundry starts. Oh, look at that one thing to do. Understand what really happened. Dad's laundry. I always set it here when it was done so he could find it. I tried so hard to keep my promise to her. Mom and Dad had this TV before they had either of us. Wait, is that? Oh my god, that's a fucking VCR slot built in that TV. Oh, that's a memory unlocked. Fuck me. Uh, me, uh, me and one of my brothers used to have that TV back when we lived with our parents in New Jersey. Not a lot of good memories associated with that time in my life, uh, not gonna lie. Gabe had barely used this backpack in weeks. Nobody could get him to go to school. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume opening the door progresses things, maybe. The killer mistress tabs in this book weren't even close to right. Junior Headbangers Guitar Academy, intermediate level. Huh. Oh, Gabe comic book? Son of Lead back when it was an indie. It was too gory for me. It was full of greeting cards. Mom kept every single one we ever got. My job was to sort them in order of how close we were to a collections notice. Wow. Thanks for trying, Lucky Cat. My God, there's just there's just way too much pressure to be putting on an eleven year old. Hey, small child, basically keep your entire family together. Just, just do it. Like. 
and you know Alex felt the obligation to do that because of her promise to her mom, too, because, man. Mom's old sewing kit. Don't think I've ever even tasted a butter cookie. I can't believe they were ever this happy. I wanted to be a werewolf that Halloween. Couldn't afford the costume. I didn't even know what CPS was. Just that I was afraid of them. Ooh, child services. And that's probably how she ended up in foster care, eventually. Hey, Gabe. I'm Leslie Halloran. I'm from the Oregon State Child Protective Services. We got a call from someone who said there might have been some kind of fight here last night. Yep. Is home? Oh, gosh. You know what? We were... Yeah, that, that was like a uh, rehearsal. And I'm in this play at school. And my dad, like, he was um, helping me learn my lines. Must be some play. But if you need anything, my number is on there. Okay? Oh, boy. Almost empty. Almost always. Once again, too real. That's mostly because, uh, you know, my mom was never super interested in, uh, cooking meals. Two cups water for one cup rice. Set timer for 30 minutes. Do your history homework. Serve. We never really touched these after mom died. She was such a good cook. Gabe used to steal dad's beer all the time. It was like the one thing they didn't fight about. I don't think there's anything I missed. No, that was for the greeting cards, okay. Uh, guess I should go try to keep the peace. Where are you going? Are you gonna tell her? Or is that my job? Keep your voice down. Fine, I'll do it. Alex, dad lost his job again. So we're broke again. Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> Despite what you may believe, you do not know everything. You think what? I laid myself off? It's okay, we'll figure it out. I could, um. I don't know, dad. But what are we supposed to do now? We gotta eat. We can sell some records, or or what about my guitar? We can sell that? Alex, what is it gonna take to get you to stop defending him? If your mother could see you now. I don't wanna hear about mom. Gabe! I'm so tired of you using her as an excuse to be a piece of shit. <laughs> don't fucking touch me, piece of shit. Dad. <laughs> Jesus! <sighs> Damn it, Alex. I'm okay. It's okay. It was an accident. Alex, I, 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 I didn't... Dad. Dad, it's okay. Really. I'm not hurt. <laughs> I can't do this. Dad? Someone will come. That woman from CPS. Someone. He just straight up abandoned them. Dad. He just straight up left them. I'm sorry. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> what the fuck?
This is so fucked, dude. This is so completely fucked. Oh god, where are we now? I'm gonna guess... Either at Helping Hands or maybe at a foster home. Or just in a straight-up nightmare room. Also... Also valid, I guess. Hey, can I ask you a question? No, Gabe, you really can't. Which orphanage is this? The one in Grant Park? Kinda thought it'd be nicer. I don't know, man, can't you're... do this, okay? I... I can't. You need to. No. Do I, you though? You need to be honest about what you see. I do was. I really need to do this? I have. And now I'm done. Almost. But not yet. Oh, fuck off! You are 12. I am 16. I steal a car and end up in juvie. Gabe, come on. Then you're 13, 14, 15. Orphanages, group homes, musty rooms in the strange houses of foster parents. By the time you're 17, you've seen them all. Somewhere along the line, you start to feel things. Your own emotions don't belong to you. You have nothing. No one. You are alone. I don't want this. Alex. Play your part. Okay, you really gotta stop saying that. You've really gotta stop saying that oh to me, God. man. I am not a fan. I think I've had about enough of playing my part, man. I want a bit part. Being the main character sucks. I don't want to do it anymore. I've, I've had it. I've had it. I'm done. How are you holding up, Shu? Can't believe how long you've had that thing. That thing was my only friend after you left. Guess I missed a few days. Happiness is a choice you make every day. Yeah, yeah, I wish it was an easier choice than you're making it out to be, poster. We weren't, al Whoops. we weren't allowed to bring glass into the dorms. So we had to drink from this thing. Like hamsters in a cage. Except if you give a hamster a glass, they don't toss it at the other hamsters' heads. Pretty sure it's locked. Must be after curfew. We're not going anywhere. Lovely. God, they put me on so many meds. Shit. I recognize lithium. I recognize lithium. I don't recognize the other ones. Hang on. Okay, so aripiprazole is something that can be used to treat schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, and Tourette's syndrome. You can also treat irritability associated with autism. Methylphenidate is for treating ADHD or narcolepsy. And then Respiridone is another one that can treat schizophrenia, bipolar, or irritability caused by autism. Jeez, dude. Did any of them ever work? Some of them helped. A little. None of them fixed me. In their defense, mutant empathy isn't exactly in the DSM. Don't know how I feel about you calling it mutant empathy. Uh, not, not too keen on that. They used to say this place wasn't a prison. Or maybe they were trying to keep you safe. From Guess what? Then. Whatever the reason, the end result was prison bars. And so in a way, they kind of both ended up in prison. Gabe literally, Alex more figuratively, 
I guess if anything, Alex is more of a prison of her own mind than anything else, and her trauma. I took a fork in here one time and hid it under my mattress. Just cuz, fuck you. Dormitory rules. Residents must adhere to their assigned schedules at all times and are not permitted to loiter in the dormitory outside of designated free time. Glass and silverware are to remain in the canteen. Do not bring these into the dormitory. Non-resident guests are not permitted in the dormitory. Lights out occurs at 9 p.m. every evening. No music, no TV, no screen time after lights out. Failure to adhere to any of these rules will result in disciplinary action. I'm afraid to ask what that entails. They should have stenciled the same thing on all of us. Property of Oregon Children's really Services. Like wow. We didn't belong to anyone else, did we? Fancy. Everyone had one good outfit. We wore them to meet the parents. Did it help? Kind of think you already know the answer to that question. Yeah, Gabe, if you're a projection of my emotional turmoil, I feel like you kind of already know. I remember the kid who put this here. Sadie... Sally. Uh, something with an S? You were friends at first, right? Way at first. Then I freaked out on her and she was done with me. Just like everyone else. I feel like there's somebody we heard about either in some of the letters that were sent to Alex from other foster kids or maybe in one of the earlier text messages. From somebody that started with an S. Is there somebody on the med chart? Whose first name was S? Uh, Sadie, yeah. Sadie Banner, okay. Oh, she had an inhaler. Okay, so she was probably asthmatic then. Who oh boy, letters to Dad. I used to write one every day. Stupid. Why? You clearly missed him. And I thought he missed me. Hence, stupid. Yeah, I want, I, part of me wants to be like, yeah, why would you write someone who clearly doesn't miss you? You know, why would you keep writing letters to someone who didn't want to stay in touch with you? But, you know, clearly Alex felt like she needed that connection to someone in her family. And, and you know, maybe, maybe if her dad got his shit together, he could get her out of this kind of place and get her out of this system. Well, there are my strings. Where's my guitar? I don't understand. Why can't I have my guitar? We've been over this, Alex. Your guitar stays in the rec room. You can play it during free time. That's bullshit. I don't need it in the fucking rec room. I need it when I'm stuck in the fucking dorms. Alex, that's enough. Maybe we'll just take away your guitar privileges entirely, if that's what you prefer. You can't do that! Oh, you know what? Maybe that's... Maybe that's related to one of the earlier journal entries? No, no, you know what? Maybe it's not, because, uh... Because the journal entry that I'm thinking of... From before the game's events... Uh, that was that was them taking her guitar away for two weeks as a result of a fight she got in. So that was that was a different scenario, I think. Speaking of the journal, dare I check? Okay, there's no new entries. All right. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, guess it's time to play my part. Oh, 
Oh god, she's really gonna have to relive being rejected by potential adoptive parents, isn't she? That's totally what this is gonna be. There's nothing I can do but just sit here and wait for the no. Oh, this fucking sucks! I mean, there's nothing I can do in the... There's nothing I can do in the phone menu, right? No, okay. So I think I literally just have to sit here and just get stared at for a while. All these people, all their feelings. Jesus, I cannot stand the idea of just a bunch of people sitting there judging me. Which, I think I've said this before, but, uh, you know, kind of weird to say considering that part of my, you know, part of my job is creating content on the internet for people to watch and judge. But, at least in that context, I'm making something. Here we're just like, hey, sit here and get judged for every flaw that you have and let us tell you no, we don't want you. Oh wait, you know what? Yeah, probably should have tried that earlier. Thanks for the hand, Alex. She's been through so much. I just don't know if we're prepared for a troubled girl. Yeah, fuck. So if you were as quote unquote damaged goods. Which is some bullshit, by the way. It says here she's sensitive. What is that mean? All these fucking parents have this perfect idea of adopting a child. And you just want some perfect, well behaved little kid that's just gonna be precocious and quiet and be the model child like they're fucking trying to adopt little orphan Annie or some shit. As if, you know, being in an orphanage probably wouldn't come with at least a little bit of baggage. I wonder why she's never found a home before. <sighs> I'm sure she's a sweet girl, but she's not for us. She's awfully old, isn't she? This is the kid that's been in all those fights. Right? I want to help. I, I really do, but there's just something off, broken, wrong with her. So I hate video games now. <sighs> Fucking hell, dude. I'm sorry. Why? You need to see it. Do I really though? See what? That nobody picked me. Nobody picked you. Nobody picked you. Nobody wanted you. Mom died. Dad left. I bailed. You couldn't keep us together. It was my job to keep us... You were 11 years old. You were 11 years old. You were a kid, Alex. Exactly. Let it go. People leave. Life gets hard. Sometimes it's a big shit sandwich. <sighs> Make it better. Be angry at dad. Miss mom. Hell, be angry at me. But don't give up. No one gets to tell you what you're worth. 
and no one can take your life away. Fight. I'm not sure I... You have a gift. It's something you don't even understand. You can change the world. Make it better. Now get up. What? Get up and fight. I'm just going to put this out there, Gabe. Um, probably better ways you could have motivated me to not give up than to make me relive childhood trauma. I'm just saying, your methodology is a little flawed there, bud. <laughs> yeah, so uh, again... Probably pretty good that we didn't take that fall all at once. But, uh, still looking a little fucked. This is not great. And it's like, yeah, hell of a nightmare sequence you just had there, Alex. Now find your way out of this life-threatening situation. No rest for the weary. That's what you get for being a main character. Oh, she still has the matchbook. She's gonna use the... Oh my god, she's gonna use the last match to light the lantern. So she can get out of the mine. The match that Gabe never lit up because he couldn't bring himself to do it. Because it reminded him of how hard life got. Fuck, dude. Oh, better make it worth it. That's your only match, girl. This is not going to be great. You absolutely have broken ribs. Definitely like a grade two concussion. Blood I loss. Have to find a way out of here. I just, I just do not know. Like plot armor is the only way you survive this. Literally. No more ladder. Not that I'd be much good at climbing. Dare I see if there's any journal entries? Well, guess we're not checking my block while we're down here. Not surprising. Nope. The pike entry was the last one. And now just find a way out of the mine. Stupendous. Mines growing into mines. Just like Jed said. Oh yeah, and all this madness, I fucking forgot. Jed fucking turned heel on us. I'm gonna choose not to read anything into this. I don't know, you might want to read into it a little bit. Life is Strange has a real bad habit of using dead animals as ominous signs. I could almost laugh if it wouldn't hurt so much. Now my question, how long has this stuff been down here? My question is, will we get any sort of indication of what Jed was alluding to? Because right before he shot me, if you guys remember, he said that he did something down here about 12 years ago, or he did something 12 years ago around this time, the sort of thing you can't undo. So, what would have happened down here that we can perhaps... Oh, no. No, 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 no. oh, no. Don't even tell me. No, no, no. God damn it. Of course. 
Of course it would have been too easy. I can do this. Oh? Okay. That's something. Oh, she's gonna use the light of something she's reading the emotions off of to light up the cat. Oh! Smart! That's smart. I like that. That's clever. That aura is the only lead I've got. That's smart. That's a good use of power. I like that. Now, dare I try to look around in the dark? Because, again, what I was saying before the lantern went out was I kind of wonder if we can find any sort of evidence of the thing that uh, that Jed was talking about, where he was like, oh, I did the sort of thing that you can't undo. And I imagine it happened in the mines because he said about 12 years ago, which would clock that at about uh, 2007. So obviously, you know, if it was 2007, it was before the mine collapse. Um, but it would have been when he was a minor. And I imagine that Jed is so beloved in the town that no one's gonna just immediately believe, oh, hey, by the way, Jed shot me and threw me into a vent shaft, lol. So I think we need to, I think we need to fucking try to find something to blow his cover, to expose whatever All his right, secret boys, was. Getting close. Oh, boy. Held average for life, huh, Jed? Dig so deep, we see where the devil sleeps. Goddamn right. Oh, this just this looks fucking it. creepy. This is what Typhon tried to bury. Oh, Lot boy. Of moisture in this soil. Jed, we gotta call it. This dig is fucked. Oh. Nothing's fucked. Oh, Jed, I bet you he kept no going and then somebody running. died no. because he wouldn't My stop the dig. never quit a dig this deep before. Uh-huh. We finish the job. Yep, somebody definitely died because he wouldn't call off the dig despite the... Questionable Steady safety goes. conditions. Steady. I'm willing to bet. Fuck with some. Move! Come on! Clear the tunnel! Who's on radio? Jed! Fuck! Jed! Jed! Oh my god. We gotta move! Now! There's still men back there. They'll drown! Yeah, and so will we if we don't get the fuck out. Make the call, Jed. God damn it. God damn it. Everyone, let's go. Now. <coughs> Smells like fireworks. Must be where Typhon blew the charges. Up, oh, we found the source. We definitely need something to fucking like bring back with us in order to in order to like expose Jed's secret because no one's gonna believe me that he's responsible for throwing me in here and shooting me. By the way, was it like somebody's tag or something? Wait a minute. What? I'm sorry, what? Because she threw the pendant at Dad before he left. And he took it. Her dad was one of the miners and he died in the dig. Dad, come back. Dad, you son of a bitch. And Jed left in the fucking, oh my God. Jed, you gotta stop. Man. Oh my God. Jed! Fuck you, Jed! Come back! It's over, Jen. He's not coming back. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Holy shit. So her dad never even got the chance to try and make right because Jed fucking left him to die 
because the stupid bastard wouldn't stop a dig even when his team was telling him, hey, shit's going south, bud. Oh my god. What in the fuck, dude? That- that I genuinely was not expecting. That actually fucking- that actually swerved me. Like, I kinda called Jed being a surprise villain with the heel turn. I absolutely did not fucking call him leaving Alex's father to die in a mine. Because of his own bravado about, oh, our team always finishes the job. We never quit a dig. Holy shit. Oh, good. And during my time here, I've come to realize what makes Haven so special. Oh, and what's it's that, Diane? Run by multiple generations. A bar owner who greets Every customer by name. Fuck you! It's a spring festival tradition going back a hundred years. History, loyalty, pride. My God, These this fucking jargon is gonna. Fine Haven are the same values. I'm gonna get sick of hearing this fucking jargon, on. dude. And that is why our partnership has been so successful. It's been my privilege. To renew Typhon's commitment to Haven. We believe in this community. And we're tremendously excited for its future. Thank you, Diane. I think I speak for all of us. When I say we're eager to make this official. Oh, do you so, speak for all of us, Jed? And then lunch. Oh, hey, Jed. I think I'll take mine to go. Probably could have come up with a better line to bust in the room with, but you know. Alex, oh I got a concussion. God. I'm not exactly working with my you A material right fine. now. We have to get you to a doctor. What happened to you? Jed happened to me, actually. I found out something you need to hear. I'm sorry. What? Alex, you're hurt. Listen, main character, plot armor, fine. It's fine. Do you need help? We can call an ambulance. Typhon's been lying to all of you. And so has Jed Lucan. Alex, what's going on? Oh, don't you start the fucking caring dad routine. You know exactly what's going on. I was down in the mine last night. I saw what Typhon's been hiding for 12 years. Jed Lucan isn't a hero. That whole story is a lie. Jed caused the accident. And then he abandoned seven of his men. He let them drown to save himself. There were pictures of me and Gabe down there in the dirt. Because one of those miners was my father. Charlotte? Typhon you gonna be alright? Covered up in case it jeopardized the vote. Everyone at that company is scared to death. All they do is protect themselves. So they decided to bury the evidence. And nothing was going to stop that blast. Not even the fact that there were four people up in the mountains. That's how Gabe was killed. Jed knew all along. 
He covered up the truth about the past, about Gabe. And when I found out, as you can see, he tried to kill me too. Come on, guys. Why aren't any of you saying anything? Guys, I'm the main character. Let's get with the program here. You, Alex. Oh, piss off, Diane. Try me. These accusations are... Well, they're insane. And trying to go into the mine was... Obviously, a very dangerous, very illegal thing to do. But we all sympathize with your situation. You've been through so much. Your brother was your only family, wasn't he? I can only imagine how much you want an explanation for his Oh, loss. you just need to back Something the fuck up right now, Diane. And make your life seem less unfair. Come on, Diane. You had the USB stick full of evidence that I gave to Pike. You should be on my side here. You miss Gabe as much as I do. Why don't you just tell the truth? You've been planning your exit from Typhon anyway. What? You never signed up for threats or attempted murder. You hate this. Now's your chance to stop. Dad, do you have any idea what Alex is talking about? No, I don't. I've oh, tried don't to be you? there for Alex since Gabe died. I thought, I don't know. I hoped I could be something of a father figure to her. Oh, piss off. All I can guess is sometimes when we're hurting, the people we lash out at are the ones who are trying to help. You tried to kill me. How can you stand there and say these things? Alex. You're a monster. Please. I know this is hard to accept. Pike you has the USB him. stick, by the way. I did too. With all but this evidence on it. Pike has the USB stick, I by the way. I believe you. Of course I do. Hell yeah, we got Steph on our side at least. I mean, she's not on the council, but, you know, on a personal level, that's a victory to me. I would like to speak. All right, come on, Ducky. We have that bonding moment this young of your lady dead wife. Came to Haven as a stranger. But over the last few weeks, she's become one of us. Now... Her story certainly seems unlikely, if not impossible. But she deserves at least an investigation of her claims. You know what? Fair enough. We ought to take her seriously. Yeah, Pike, who still has the fucking USB stick, by the way. Ducky, you're being unhelpful. Eleanor, come on. Alex, sweetheart. Eleanor... You know our mind can play tricks on us. Eleanor? None of it is your fault. It's so hard to admit you need help. But struggling alone... No. You shouldn't have to go through that. Eleanor, come the fuck on! We're all worried about you. Let us help you. Ryan, come on, man. Be on my side here. Charlotte? Charlotte. Charlotte, please tell me you have something to say. No. Leave me alone. I don't want any more of this. Oh my fucking god! They killed Gabe. 
What are you trying to do? Take down Typhon? I won't bring him back. All I know is everything falls to shit when you're involved. There's something wrong with you, Alex. And now there's something wrong with me. Yeah, that's me taking her anger away, you butting me in the ass. Sorry. Fuck me, dude. I fucking knew it that was gonna bite me in the ass somehow. Come on, Pike. Don't worry, Alex. I got this. Bring out the USB stick. Shut up, oh, Diane. USB stick full of recordings. Exactly. Yes, we went through this yesterday. Your superiors closed the case. None of us have time for conspiracies. Shut your fucking mouth, Diane. You're trying to weasel your way out of things again, huh? I know your game. I know. Don't how you... test me, Jason. Oh, the first name. I'm not scared of you anymore. And out of you. Not Typhon. All right, that's enough. Deputy Pike, do you have some kind of personal issue with me? Like hell I do. Jason. Well, given that your judgment in this matter is emotionally compromised, you should probably remove oh, yourself. Oh, cut from... the crap. If you think you could shut me up. Hey, guys. Um, how's it going? I'm really sorry. This is a load of bullshit. Are you? Ryan, come on, man. Why are you doing this? Your dad's a fucking murderer. What do you mean? My dad is not a murderer. For fuck's sake, dude. Were you afraid we couldn't get Typhon? Is that why you need someone else to blame? I thought we were in this together. For Gabe. What are you talking about, man? Ryan. I'm not going to let you do that to me anymore. Ryan, what the hell? I know he's your dad, but look at her. You think I did this to myself? Come on, dude. This? It's going too far. Alex almost died. It's not true. Seriously, you think I threw you, myself Ryan? down a mine? After everything? Seriously, fuck you. Stop. Oh boy. Shit's about to get really real here. I know why you tried to kill me. It's not what you tell yourself. That you thought it was best for Haven. This was never about Haven at all, was it? This was about you. I know it's easier not having to think about the men you buried. You want to look away and pretend the people you hurt aren't people. But I won't let you. My father worked for you. His name was John. Oh, I feel like these were all valid. The world never gave him anything for free. He fought just to stay alive. He fought for us. Maybe he was finally winning. There's every chance he could have he actually him. could have actually come back for us. The mining job worked out. And then Gabe, my big brother. He was building a family here, doing it his own way, figuring it out as he went along. He was so nervous about it and so excited. And he brought me here to be part of that family. But he died. Because of you. And then there's me. For 
so many years, I just wanted to survive. To get through. They even changed me. I started to think about the future. Ooh. Ooh. This could be important. Oh, thinking about my future. Fuck me, dude. Um, okay. Uh, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I feel like playing, or I feel like saying I want to play music is saying I want to leave and tour the world with Steph. When, when I know that's something I definitely said in the last episode, that I hope maybe we would get like a, get like an ending where we just like scour the world together and play little dive bars and just have gay domestic adventures together. But like, I don't know. I don't know if this is actually going to deter uh, determine anything or if this is just different dialogue for each. It's not like a, like a big, big decision, but it could still have some sort of outcome on the ending? Mm. I also feel like all three of these are valid. Like, Alex would obviously want to play music because she got back into playing guitar, and guitar has been such an important thing in her life. But she also really wants to not feel like a freak, which is what her, you know, empath powers have made her feel like for so long in her life. And also, you know, just the the turbulent feelings of rejection and loneliness from just either not being adopted or being adopted and then being put right back into the system before too long. And I feel like I tried to help people with my powers, so, you know, not like it really worked all that well. In some cases, Charlotte. Okay, I gotta make a decision here. I want to belong somewhere. I want to know that there's a place and a group of people who wouldn't be the same without me. I was starting to feel that here. And you tried to murder me. You would have ended my life just so you wouldn't have to face the truth. Come on, Jed, confess your sins. Turn yourself in, bud. Gotten it, haven't you? You've plastered over it with another story. Uh, before I make this decision, you, you guys have been noticing right throughout this whole sequence that Alex is like, uh, I don't know if this is the correct term for like the black parts of your eyes, but her irises, I think, were like flashing the different colors of the emotions that I guess Jeb was putting out. I'm guessing that's her like reading all the emotions in him as she goes about this whole thing. You tell yourself you're a good man. You take care of so many people. You gave me a roof and a job. You checked on me when I was grieving. I'm such a good, generous man. But that's the lie. 
if you scrape it away, what do we see? Ooh. Square's calling to me, man. Eleven years ago, you led a group of men to their deaths. And you couldn't even say those words out loud. Because you're a coward. You couldn't imagine saying it to your wife. Saying it in front of your son. Every day you were brave enough to go underground and look death in the eye. But you couldn't muster the courage to admit the mistake. I can feel you trying to pull away. Don't. The truth hurts. Sometimes it's so awful you think you're going to break. But when you come out the other side and you're whole and free and still alive, then you'll finally know how strong you really are. I see the truth about you. You hate yourself. You hate what you did in the past. You hate what you've done to keep it secret. And the more you deny that hatred, the worse it grows. I know who you are. I've seen the worst parts of you. Oh. You know, I feel like... Man... Like, my first instinct is to go like, no, fuck you, circle every day of the week, condemn, 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 but like, I mean, obviously that'd be my first instinct because one, just the general horror of what he did, just leaving seven men behind in order to save the rest of his team, including Alex's father, and two, fucking lying about it afterwards and letting the town hail him as a hero. Although not too much, because again, if you remember back in episode one, Jeb wasn't too gung-ho about Steph telling the story. Um. But I almost feel like Alex... I don't know, part of me almost feels like Alex would take the approach of like, I forgive you because I know that if you didn't leave some of your men behind, you all would have died. And you obviously made the deal with Typhon in order to, you know, not get into any sort of trouble for letting a bunch of people die on your watch because, again... Accident or not, that comes back to Jed making his, uh, making the decision to, you know, continue the dig despite, you know, the team's warnings that, hey, shit was going wrong. I just, I don't know if I can forgive him, though. He did fucking shoot me. Let's not forget that. He did shoot me. Dump me in a vent shaft, and then try to go about business as if nothing was wrong. Like, what was going to be the cover story for this? Oh, by the way, Alex just committed suicide by jumping into a ventilation shaft? Specifically in the mine where I let seven men, including her father, die 
in a cave in right after she was looking into Typhon's shady activities like do I let that slide do I let John Chen's death slide do I let Gabe Chen's death slide I don't think so And I condemn you. Okay. But what the fuck happens now? Does I mean, does he go to jail? What? Don't keep me in suspense here, loading screen. Fuck. Give me something to work with here, man. It's like, that town council vote was like, not accounting for Jed, who was basically a secured vote. That vote was looking like it was going to be 50-50. You know? Still in the loft. And the news is still coming in on the Typhon mining scandal that has rocked the western city oh. of Haven Springs. Typhon getting their just desserts. For shocking revelations. Local bar owner and council president Jed Lucan admitted in a tearful confession to covering up the death of seven Typhon employees as their manager 12 years ago. A recent cover-up, which involved a clandestine and unpermitted explosion to thwart inspections, caused the death of a Haven local, Gabe Chen, last month. Mr. Lucan is currently in police custody, awaiting arraignment. We will have plenty more about this developing story, including the resignation of Typhon C. Market Impact, and what it all means for your drive time commute coming right up. Oh, nice shot. Oh, God, where's Stephen? Where does Stephen Ryan end up in all this? Yeah, the silence is worse. I need to get some air. Yeah, good idea. If that's not the ending, how the fuck does this end? And willpower, I'm now ready to move from the bed to the rooftop. Seriously, where the fuck do we go from here? Jed's in police custody. The Typhon CEO is stepping down. Ryan, I think, hates me. <laughs> Which, okay, like, my romance path was with fucking Steph, so, like, I'm not... Super concerned about that, I guess, but I did still want Ryan to be on my side and, like, believe me. Oh well, I guess we better check the phone. What a wonderful spring festival! Thanks to everyone who made it such a beautiful celebration! Now spill the beans! Who got a rose? I know someone who might have gotten one. Wink! I think I might know someone who got one as well. Wink, wink, wink! Aw, oh, poor Hector. Ah, uh, Ryan. Can we brag for someone else? Hey, Steph, do I have permission to brag about the rose you got last night from your crush? <laughs> Aw. Oh, uh, Rory Praha, the same guy who was asking uh, for a comment from Diane about uh, the, the blast that killed Gabe, according to those files. Hello, as many of you know, I'm a freelancer for the Rocky Mountain Gazette. I'm writing an article about this evening's incredible performance. Can't track down the band's name. Hey man, so we aren't like a band as such. Yeah, these are these first couple are definitely from like last night, I think. So we don't really assuming this is the day after. I don't. I have no idea. If this is like the day after or what? Is there? Is there any indication of like the date on these? I guess not. I'm Steph Gingrich, the brains of the operation. My muscle is Alex. Wow. Hey, anybody seen Alex today? We agreed to meet up last night, but then she ghosted. Super not like her. Kind of freaking out. Oh no, have you contacted Jason? Call his cell. No response. I'll try 911. Uh, Fuck you, Jed. The Black Lantern will not be open for lunch today on account of the town council vote. We'll see you for happy hour. Yes on jobs. Yes on prosperity. Yes on expansion. Fuck yourself, Aaron. 
You do realize that expanding mining operations outside of Haven is a temporary fix, right? That's not even considering the environmental impact. Do you have any proof? What do you want, a bibliography? I don't keep citations at the ready at the off chance of it. Of that. I don't keep citations at the ready on the off chance I encounter someone who isn't willing to accept the truth. That's what I thought. Yeah, Aaron's one of those people who's like, oh, you want to tell me something that's happening in the world? Uh, give me an entire citation page full of evidence that I will never look at anyway because I've already made up my mind about what I believe. Hello, neighbors. Thank you for making last night's Spring Festival such a resounding success. Now comes another annual tradition, cleaning up after ourselves. I need a few volunteers to help me spruce up the park in the wake of last night's uh, festivities. Where it begins as soon as today's council meeting concludes, drop your name in a hat. Sure, why not? I'm down. We're pretty hungover, but Jesse and I might be recovered by this afternoon. Tentative, yes? Take care of you first, but if you're feeling up for it, we'd love to have you both. Fuck off, Jed! A statement regarding the ongoing investigation in Haven Springs. We appreciate the community's concerns. Details are still emerging and we are cooperating with the state police. We currently have exactly as much information as any of you. Addendum. State police have tapped Deputy Jason Pike to provide assistance in this case and as such, management of this account will be handed over, or has been handed over, to another deputy. While we acknowledge that Deputy Pike has come to occupy a special role in the Haven Springs community, we urge you to direct all inquiries through official channels. I just don't understand how all this could happen under your noses. What is going on over there? This is not an acceptable statement. Nothing but respect for our boys in blue. Singular boy in beige, who danced to Typhon's tune. Wow, Cass. True, though. Up until I took his fear away. There was no way cops didn't know. There's something they're not telling us. Follow the money. Fuck off, Aaron. Due to recent events, the Black Lantern will remain closed to regular business until further notice. The poster has disabled replies. We at Typhon Mining would like to express our gratitude towards Haven Springs for your continued support. We have issued a statement, which is available for you to read on our website. The poster has disabled replies. Hello, friends. I've decided to open back up to commissions. I think we're all looking for ways to stay busy right now, and making art has always been my favorite method. So please get in touch if you want a portrait. I try to keep my rates reasonable, and I offer a discount for first-time commissions. Awesome news. Should we call the shop? That works fine. Smile. I don't know if Charlotte would be willing to give me a portrait, though, considering that... I think she kind of just hates me. Hey Haven, the Record Traders is currently accepting applications. Oh, that's right, because Steph wanted to leave. Priority will be shown to applicants with previous retail broadcast experience. Fill out an application on our website. We'll be conducting interviews next week. Dope. Okay, so I'm deaf applying, if you're hiring 16-year-olds, lol. But, um, is there like a sudden opening? Who left? Nobody just yet, but to be honest, I'm kind of eyeing the exits. Looking for new adventures. Aw, oh, jeez, I'll miss ya back at you, kiddo. We're working on a story about the Typhon controversy, and I'd love to speak with you, either on or off the record, about your experiences. I'm not really comfortable talking about it right now. Your comfort would be my priority. Please contact me at this number if you change your mind. Thank you for your time, and stay safe. Thank you. Well, at least... At least Jessica's not hounding me about it. Alex, you're incredible, and I'm here for you no matter what. Call me the minute you need anything. I know. Thank you for having my back. It meant so much. Of course. How could I not, after everything? Heart. Aw. At least that's still solid. Also, based on the dates, uh, there is confirmation. I believe this is the very next day. If this text was from today, that is. Yeah, thank you for having my back. Yeah, that's from today. Okay, so this is, this is still literally the next day. Which means I probably got cleaned up and, you know, given medical attention pretty quick. Alex, I'm sorry. Oh? My dad was a hero. That's what everyone said for years. And it took so many lies to hold that up. Disgusting, terrible lies. Typhon lied. Dad lied. But worst of all, I lied to myself. Even when the truth was right in front of my eyes, I believed him over you. I'm so sorry. And I hope one day you'll forgive me. I think that could be arranged. Maybe with an apology pizza? Hey Chen, didn't think you'd actually take down Typhon. You're braver than I ever imagined. Now you owe me a new job. Not funny, Mac. I'm glad you're okay. Really. Ha, thanks Mac. 
Oh, okay, so this is actually like a day after. Oh, okay, so... This is on the 27th now. Assuming these aren't just gonna keep going further and further into the future. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that Charlotte one, but uh, we got Ducky first. Dear Alex, You've been through an awful lot these past few weeks, but your resilience and courage continues to astound me. I have no doubt that you will weather this affront against your person with the same grace as you demonstrated to me during our lovely dance at the Spring Festival. A moment I will not soon forget. So please remember that we are here for you. Sincerely, Reginald McAllister III. I know, and I appreciate you sticking up for me, Ducky. See, Ducky's one of the only people whose support I really need. And I'm glad I have that. You were right. You needed me. The one woman who should have believed you above everyone. And I failed. Mm, I mean, I did kind of take your anger away from you and, you know, kind of leave you weirdly detached, so... Uh, I mean, both are bad, I guess? <laughs> Char, it's okay. Just take care of yourself and Ethan. Charlotte? Oh. Oh. I'm not feeling good about that time gap, and that was... If this is the 27th, that was at least a day ago, and she left me presumably on red. Oh, I don't feel good about where that probably went. Wait, 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 let me... Let me just check something. What was this? Oh, it doesn't even say. I was gonna check... Like, cross-reference this with the post of when Charlotte opened up for commissions again. But, I mean, shit. I don't know, man. Oh, hey, a picture of Ethan and his dad, and they both got Thanor hats. Tad knows what's up. That's awesome, Ethan. You guys look great. Thanks. Oh, my God, I heard what happened. Oh, it's the 28th. Okay. Okay, so it's been a few days. It makes more sense now. Probably not going to be, you know, as well healed up after, like, a few hours as I would be after a few days. Makes a bit more sense. OMG, I heard what happened. You weren't going to mention being a superhero when I texted yesterday? I'm glad you're safe. Ha, thanks, buddy. Me too. Is your mom doing okay? I'm worried about her. Valid question. She's fine. I think it's my turn to take care of her now. Maybe that's weird, but I'm pretty sure it's true. Oh, no. Ethan's going to... Mm, not sure if I like that outcome because he's probably going to get trapped in the same kind of mindset that Alex had of... Having to take care of a parent who's maybe not super in a good place. And it's going to affect how he grows up. Ugh. A lot less weird than you think. She's very lucky to have you. Also, can I just point out that there's like a really consistent theme in this game about... Like, children like taking care of their parents. Like, we've seen that with Alex and her dad. We've seen that with... Uh, with, um, uh, who am I trying to think of? Riley with Eleanor. And now with Ethan and, um, uh, Charlotte. Seems to be a very consistent theme here of parents who, for one reason or another, are maybe not in the best state, and it kind of forces the children to maybe grow up and become caretakers sooner than they would like. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too far into that. Alex? Arthur Jones with the New York Telegram. We want your story in our ongoing Typhon coverage. When's a good time to speak to you over the phone? Sorry, I'm not doing any media right now. I'm getting a lot of requests. When did you learn that your father lived in Haven Springs and worked with, uh, worked with Jed Lucan? Way to fucking respect her wishes, you douche. How did it feel to learn that, that Jed Lucan was responsible for the mining accident that killed your father? Why do you think Jed Lucan confessed to his crimes? This caller has been blocked. Yeah, you know what? Good call. And now, finally, it's the group chat. Starting at the time where I fucking disappeared. Alex, please pick up. Just let us know you're okay as soon as you can. I'm pretty sure you just lost your phone, but Ryan's freaking out. Okay, we're both freaking out. We just want to make sure you're safe. Call us. Alex? Yeah, and that's probably when uh, Steph was texting at the beginning of the town council meeting. Right before I showed up, all covered in blood, and Ryan almost didn't believe me. Maybe Dad deserved everything he got, but I'm still glad we were there with him in his last moments. Whew. Gotta tell ya, uh, mixed feelings about Dad. Obviously, uh, I think we can have a moment of zen here on the bed, and, you know, I'll kinda gather my thoughts on that then. I this guitar, 
But if it starts asking me riddles again, I'm throwing it out the window. Yeah, if your guitar starts asking you riddles, it's probably a good idea to get rid of it. I'm just saying. But yeah, on the on the whole thing with Alex's dad, like it's it's a mixed bag, obviously. You know? I've been playing a lot the last two days, trying to think things through. But I realize it's actually the opposite. When I'm playing is the only time I get to not think. Not think about Jed or Gabe. Or being betrayed and wanting to forgive, but not knowing if I can. Most of all, what I don't think about is me. Because I've never been good at that. And suddenly, it's the only question that's left. So, I just keep playing. Wow. But like, like I was saying with Alex's dad, it's kind of a mixed bag, I think, because obviously he was not in a position to raise two kids by himself. He clearly never got over the death of his wife. And... And he was just not ready to raise Gabe, who was obviously acting out because he was frustrated and, you know, starting to rebel because of the unstable family life and the unstable living situation with, you know, his dad obviously being between jobs a lot. Not to mention how all this affected Alex with her having to take on, like, sort of the maternal role in the house and basically take care of both of them. In order to keep things together, or as together as she could, given the situation, and also because of her promise to her mom to be strong, and to take care of the family, which is, yeah, a lot to put on an 11-year-old, but like, <sighs> yeah, clearly, clearly her dad was trying to fucking get his shit together. But that's still no excuse for constantly getting into spats and fights with Gabe. It certainly wasn't an excuse to fucking back elbow Alex in the face. Accident or not, you shouldn't have been in a situation where you were being so aggressive that anyone was going to get hit. Like, it wouldn't have been better if it was Gabe. Just because he was ready for a punch. You know? Just because he was expecting a punch doesn't mean that would have been better if it was him and not her. That's still your child. Like, here's the thing. I'm the kind of person that is very quick to fucking cut people out when they, when they like, you know, hurt me or betray me. So it, it makes forgiveness kind of hard. But if someone could actually put in the effort to get their life together and actually prove that not only are they really sorry for where they where they messed up and they fell short and for the decisions that they made and not only prove that they're a good person again and that they were actually willing to make up for the things they did wrong but they actually put that into action not even just because they think oh I'll be forgiven and everything will be right as rain but just because it's the right thing to do Then I think I would have been willing to forgive, you know, somebody like John. Because again, he seemed like he was putting in the effort to try and make something work and maybe reconnect with his kids one day. And Gabe certainly had the idea to forgive Dad. He certainly had the idea. It was on his make shit right list, you know. He certainly didn't cross it off before he died, but, you know, he certainly had the idea in his head, so he was, he was getting there, and he, and you gotta remember, he was looking for, he was looking for information about his dad in the meantime for searching for Alex, so it's entirely possible he was gonna try and, like, maybe mend that fence with his dad at the same time. I don't know, man. I just don't know anymore. Like, I have strenuous connections with my family, like, at best. So maybe I'm not the right person to ask about that. 
Maybe Salem would be cool. I'm already an expert in witch trials. Must be rare that a local paper gets to break out the really big headline. The Rocky Mountain Gazette. Scandal. Eight deaths covered up by Typhon Mining. Oh, yeah. I was about to say eight. It was seven, but no. We're, um, we got to count the seven miners and then also Gabe. The picturesque mountain town of Haven Springs is reeling after a series of revelations. Oh, yeah. So then it just cuts off because the paper's folded. Expansion efforts halted. Residents are left wondering about the effects of local business. Ooh. Ooh. See? This is why I try to only read the art sections. Old and new talent shine at Spring Festival. Editor's note. The following review was filed before the events of the town council meeting the following day. For all related coverage on those events, please see A1, A2, A3, B1, C1, D2, D3, E1, and E2. A surprising newcomer and three-time veteran joined together to create musical magic under the Spring Festival stars on Saturday. Alex Chen, whose brother Gabe, er, whose brother Gabe Chen, longtime bartender at the Black Lantern, was killed in a tragic mining accident. Did you have to include that? Did you really have to include that in the review? Was was that necessary? Lit up the crowd with her passionate vocals and powerful guitar. It has been a long time since I've witnessed a spring festival crowd dance together with a band in like that, noted Jesse McPherson, local novelist. Oh yeah, the writer boyfriend. It was transportive. Steph Gingrich, KRCT DJ and mainstay at the Spring Festival stage, held down the drums. For what the duo claimed was their only first was only their first time playing together, including even practice sessions, color this viewer attack. Uh, color this reviewer, excuse me, a tad skeptical. The chemistry was palpable. I think I speak for all in attendance when I say here's hoping that this is the beginning of a new spring festival of tradition that will continue for many years to come. What, somebody really cool kind of, you know, bamboozling me onto stage and hoping I play a really sick cover of a classic song? Bowed but not broken, Haven will survive. The image of Haven Springs as an idyllic refuge, an oasis of comfort and civility blissfully removed from the torment of the outside world, was shattered on Sunday. In truth, that haven never really existed outside of postcards and tourism board drivel anyway. But while we have weathered troubles and fought demons in the past, we know that this Typhon mining scandal will leave a unique scar on the psyche of our small town, not just from what took place, Horrible enough as those details are, but from whom was involved, from who was involved, excuse me, a young and beloved bartender, a respected mining industry up-and-comer, and the town's most revered patriarch at the center of it all. Jed Lucan currently sits in the San Miguel County or country prison. He is under 24-hour suicide watch for fear that he may try to harm himself, but the harm he has done to this town, to all of us who knew and trusted him over the years... It's just beginning to be understood. Still, in the face of this tremendous calamity, we say, Haven will survive. We will emerge, if not stronger, at least a bit wiser for having overcome it. We will do this not because it is easy, but because we have no other choice. It is our home. I wonder how... I wonder if this would have been different. I wonder if this would have been different based on if, like... If I had picked certain things differently, or maybe if I had picked different dialogue in the in that final big soul read of Jed, you know? Because I was wondering how those options would have affected things. Oh, bomber jacket, hello? Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. Oh, this was his... Ah, oh, this is Dad's bomber jacket. As a member of the Hell Divers. You ever swing a pick before? Oh boy, Mr. Chen, John, and no, but I. I'm a hard worker, and I learn fast, and I don't mind long hours. You don't have somebody waiting on you at home? No, sir. Well, John, guess you're a Hell Diver now. Oh boy. 
That's rough. Nothing like being called delusional by someone you trusted. That one really hurt. <sighs> Fucking Eleanor. Would I, would I have kept her confidence in me if... Yeah, I mean, literally that option was keep Eleanor's confidence when I was deciding whether or not to tell Riley about the uh, Alzheimer's. But, like... Dude, I wanted to fucking have Riley know that her grandma might not have been in the best state and so Riley could take care of her. Something she probably knew she was going to have to do soon anyway. Like, like, I'm sorry, Eleanor, but I was looking out for your best interest there. Also, um, probably something really thematically important about the fact that Alex just left the last piece of that puzzle missing. Hopefully that's not significant. Still looking out for me, huh, Pike? Oh, oh, so Jed kept the... Oh, you know what? He probably went back down in the mine and fucking... grabbed the bomber jackets of anyone who had died in the rubble. Probably as a means... Probably as a means... To hide evidence that they were miners on his Helldiver team so that they wouldn't connect the dots and know that Jed actually lied about seven deaths. I'll never understand exactly what happened to me down there, but I'll always be grateful. I didn't give up, Gabe. Despite you fucking with me and my brain for a good, like, 45 goddamn minutes. Good thing I sold off all my Typhon stock. Typhon CEO resigns amid stock plummet. Sources say FBI investigation imminent. Just hours after a defiant press conference in which he vowed to see his company through the choppy waters ahead, Dennis Walker has resigned as CEO and chairman, there's a voice crack, of Typhon Incorporated. Meanwhile, shares of, uh, shares of the global mining concern, once top five in its sector, have nearly halved from 48.27 to uh, 28.22. The, it's dollars and cents, Daniel, for fuck's sake. $48.27 per share to $28.22 per share with no bottom in sight. It all stems from a series of shocking allegations and confessions tied to operations in western Colorado, where regional operations coordinator Diane Jacobs and former mining team leader Jed Lucan were arrested for... I'm pretty sure my voice was already heard by everyone who needed to hear it. Oh, good. More media people. Alyssa R. from the Denver Tribune. I trust you have received my other messages and voicemails. I'm asking for 10 minutes of your time. We go to print at 8. Please, let me help your voice be heard. Not sure if I'm feeling it. Is it weird that the part of this that bothers me the most is nondescript dive bar? Colorado mining scandal has deep state fingerprints. Oh, God. Some kind of conspiracy theory nonsense, I bet. Deep state deniers and wool-eyed cynics. Good luck trying to make sense of what went down in the small mountain town of Haven Springs last week. Behind closed doors of a nondescript dive bar, eight town council members gathered to discuss a municipal mining permit. And when the doors opened, one of them was admitting to murder, another to criminal fraud. And yet no one else could explain, in any rational way anyway, how this all supposedly happened. Local, a local taxidermist Reginald McAllister, known to others in town as Ducky, described a near hypnosis in the room as a great man was made to stand naked before all, and exhumated truth begot its rightful place atop the throne. To longtime readers, the implications could not be clearer. This town council must belong to, or be a servant of, the globalist paragovernmental military industrial nexus that dictates international blah 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 blah. You probably shouldn't. Is, is gone. Thank you. There are no victories at the end of this. Just more painful truth. <sighs> you said it, sister. I felt very close to Ducky after our dance. I guess he felt the same way. 
I'm going to guess Charlotte not so much. Was Charlotte's response all my fault? Or would she have turned on me no matter what? You know, that's a good question, actually, because, uh, you know, looking over the fucking choices again for Charlotte's situation, the anger that I took from her, a lot of that was for me. And even at the town council meeting, Charlotte was like, things are fucked whenever you get involved. So it is entirely possible that Charlotte probably would have not been on my side regardless. Because either it's because I made her weirdly detached from reality by taking her anger away, or I would have left her anger in her and she would have still been angry at me for, you know, you know, just being a target of her blame for Gabe's death along with, like, Ryan and Ethan himself, and also Gabe himself. But also just for, like, other things. It's entirely possible that Charlotte just would not have been on my side regardless. I'm ready for some fresh air. Not before we look at all the interactables. This air was powered by adrenaline that whole morning. Now I'm mostly powered by extra strength Advil. And these. Adrenaline, you say? Are we sure we're not talking about main character plot armor? Okay, so I decided to check the journal real quick to see if there was any new entries, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, this is certainly one. Jed, Alex, Jed, Alex, bleh? I got good at describing other people's emotions in this book. Even new emotions. Complicated ones. I could push through the mystery, find the words, but... I don't know if I can do that here. I know that something in me resonated with something in Jed, each looking into the other, drawing us together. I saw it in him, and it was like walking into a house you used to live in, seeing what someone else has done to it. Blazing self-hatred, so bright you can't let yourself look at it. The sure knowledge that you spread rot to everything you touch. The rigid feeling of the role, the routine, the lines you memorize and regurgitate to keep yourself from succumbing to the pull and looking at the truth. I don't regret what I did to Jed. He's a monster, no matter what was inside of him. And monsters deserve to be taken down. But now, in the smoldering aftermath, I find myself wondering if... All of this is what I deserve. Because while the monster is gone, the hatred is still here. I feel it. A flame and heart, angrily lashing around for more to burn. Maybe it's part of me now. Jed's final scar. And the only one that will never heal. Fill your hands with grains of sand. In the rocks you see the clocks. Thought I could hunt. I could be brave. Nothing can save you. Nothing to save. Of the times that pass, the good, the bad, your life's a life you'll wish you had. Oh boy, there is so much to unpack there. There is so much to unpack there, dude. The LARP was two days ago. That doesn't seem possible. Yeah, that really seems weird that that was only two days ago. Oh boy, business card from a lawyer. Maybe I do deserve some dollar sign justice, but I'd much rather be able to move on with my life. I don't know. I, mean, I think maybe you should get some dollar sign justice so you can afford to move on with your life. I'm just saying. I would, I would probably try to, you know, get some monetary compensation, which I am certainly entitled to if I'm in your shoes. I want to go outside without seeing anyone. That's why God created rooftops. Is there anything else in the room I forgot? Anything else I could have a quick look at before I go to this rooftop? Because I feel like this may be a point of no return. And you know what? Believe it or not, I don't think I'm in the mood for mine haunts. Besides, I'm pretty sure it's an option in the main menu to just play that on its own anyway, so, uh... Come back to that in my own time. Oh. 
Hello? Steph, maybe? Hello? Hey, Steph. Alex hey! Before you say anything, I have to get this out. Okay. Okay. Oh, this doesn't seem good. What you did at the council meeting, it was the bravest thing I've ever seen. And it made me want to be brave, too. So, here it goes. I want to be with you. Yo, for real? I shit about playing music or seeing the world. I mean, I do, but only if it's with you. Yes, if a thousand times yes. Instead, then... <sighs> Fuck it. <laughs> I want to stay here, too. Yo! Fuck it, that was amazing. I've never had anyone barge in to tell me that they wanted to be with me before. Yeah? How'd it feel? Yeah, I kind of like that. <laughs> You've, uh, given me a lot to think about. Well, good. That was the idea. You know where to find me. Good luck, Chen. Thanks, Steph. Also, I wanted to mention this in the town council scene, but can we just talk about how weird it is to see Steph without a hat? I I'm not the only one that thinks that's weird, right? Just like, I I've only ever seen her with a hat until this came. You know? Like, I don't know. It's a weird thing to fixate on, but like... It just seems so weird for her to not be wearing a hat in the last couple scenes. Oh boy, back in this rooftop, in those chairs, at that table. Alright. Just tell me. What? My future. What to do? The night of the Spring Fest, Steph made a strong push for leaving with her. Playing on the road, the excitement of the unknown. I mean, it might be a little difficult considering she tore the ticket up. Shit went down. <laughs> Come on, you're the know-it-all. So tell me. He's not gonna tell you. It's gonna be up to you, Actually, Alex. I do know what you should do. You should stay in Haven. Oh, we actually did give me an answer. Really? You really think so? Of course. You finally have a home, a job, people who actually like you. Why would you give that up? That's true. He's making a valid point, and Steph is still here. Especially because she tore up her bus ticket. Then again, maybe leaving would be better. Yep, this is where the indecisiveness comes in. What? You're young, you suddenly have a little money, friends. And don't you think it's time to give this music thing a real shot? No, you should definitely leave. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, fucking that's what I'm thinking. Stop it, Gabe. You are zero help, Gabe. I don't need the mysterious spirit bullshit right now. I just need... I just need my big brother. I'm sorry. I know. Hear something. Oh boy. It's three hours from now. A bus pulls away. Okay. You're not on it. And neither is Steph. Okay, liking it so far. Life goes on. It 
you get a job working with Steph at the record store? Hell yeah. Quick, caption this. What song are they air playing? Leave it in the comments. All those years of being a music snob finally pay off. And little by little, time does its thing. Yo, Winter's gotta look amazing here. Yep. God, I love Winter, dude. I really do. Okay, and don't leave me in suspense, Gabe. Hey, he thinks I'm just back in a bit. Less like a museum, more like a home. Man, I hope that means Charlotte's not like you know mad at me anymore, or at least doesn't hate me. If she's letting Ethan come over. Thoughts of Jed, of Typhon, even of me, begin to fade into the background. Shit, more D&D. &D. Steph back on her DM bullshit. And I love it. I mean, so far this seems pretty good. The rooftop is your stage. You perform every week to a small but adoring group of fans. Maybe while you play, you wonder what could have been. Performing for more people in more cities, sharing your music with the world. Now, I almost wonder if Ryan wouldn't have been in that other chair. Or maybe you never think about that much at all. If I had done more to like keep him on my side somehow? I wonder if it's even possible to have both happens, in the chairs. But one day you look around and find that you have transformed this place just as much as it has transformed you. Because she wanted to belong, because that's the thing I picked for that dialogue thing. Whew. And the most extraordinary thing of all is just how normal it feels. You don't question it. You don't doubt it. Or wonder what might have been. It's your life. The life you fought so hard to have. And for the first time in a long time, you just live. Thank you. Don't mention it. You really think I'll transform Haven? Of course. You already have. With your gift, your music, just by being you. But Alex, that doesn't mean you have to stay. You have the potential to do that anywhere you go. Uh, go where? Where am I supposed to go? I don't have any other home. That is true. But you didn't have any home before coming here. And look what happened. The truth is, there's no telling what that version of your future might be. 
The only promise is the adventure. So, what do you think? This is where it makes me pick, doesn't it? We haven't had a major decision this whole episode so far. God damn it! <sighs> well... I... Is it, is it weird that, like, my... I think, like, one of my main priorities is whether or not this decision will affect whether I get to do stuff with Steph? Because obviously Steph was the one who put forth the idea of us leaving Haven to go tour the world anyway. Like, you know, I'm leaning, I'll tell you where I'm leaning right now. I'm kind of leaning towards Alex, like, staying in Haven just because I, I do kind of want just a place where I do feel welcomed and appreciated and important. Like, where people, like, welcome me there. And I'm not just, like, some figure in the background, you know? I'm not just part of the architecture. I feel like Alex would want that too, you know? Then again, then again, you know, like I said, Steph is the one who put forth the idea that we would leave Haven together and tour the world as, you know, I guess we don't really have a name, but I'm still going with Drugstore Makeup 2.0 and playing little dive bars here and there and seeing the world and, you know, kind of getting a view of what the sunset looks like from a different rooftop somewhere. I don't know, man. Like, here's the thing. Like, I'm almost entirely certain, right, that I feel like, I feel like Steph and I are kind of going to be together regardless, because I feel like I've gone far enough down that path where, um, we're like, we're like locked in, right? And that was, that was kind of one of the important things for this playthrough to me. Was like seeing what happens if I romance Steph and hopefully, uh, hoping that I would end up together with her in the end. And I feel like I've gotten that kind of, you know, secured. So I feel like Steph will be with me regardless of what I do. Because she was even saying in the loft, like, no matter what you do, whether you stay or go, I want to do it with you. And... You know, there is a part of me that really still just wants that fucking adventure with someone who I care about, who also cares about me, where we're just touring the world, or at least, you know, whatever parts of America we can afford to tour in, and just playing in a different city every night seeing what life has to offer. As long as I'm doing it with someone I love, I mean, who cares whether we stay or go, right? And honestly, I... I think I said this at the very start of the game, but I'm not sure if I could spend my entire life in such an isolated place. You know, like I would need to, um, like I would need to fucking, 
Like, given the choice, I would want to, like, try and see something outside of a place like Haven at some point. And I almost feel like... I almost feel like maybe Alex would want to, you know, not have Steph give up on her dreams to play music at different places like she was all excited about on the rooftop in episode 4. Like, that was the whole thing for her potentially leaving in the first place. She wanted to play music, and she wanted Alex to come with her. Like... Like, I want to see the world. I want to see what life has to offer. Steph wants to play music. She wants to play music with me. And we want to do this together. And suddenly that choice became a whole lot easier. Seek adventure. I know what I want. Yeah, that's the other thing that I was thinking of, like, I think maybe staying in Haven would be Alex, like, clinging to the memory of Gabe. So. I don't know. I don't know if that'd be such a good idea. Also, Ryan does not look so hot right now. Uh, where's Steph? Where is Steph? Oh, there she is. Okay, good. I was worried there for a second. Oh, Pike and Ducky are off to see me off. Off to see me off. What the fuck in a sense is that? Now, I'm guessing Charlotte and uh, Eleanor aren't here to see me off because uh, probably because they weren't with me in the town council meeting. That makes sense. See, I'm worried about Ryan now because like, oh, he's got to deal with the fact that his dad's a piece of shit. Man. I hope he's going to be okay. You know? Fuck him up, babe. Aw. Love that. I fucking love that. Oh, this is a couple months later. Damn. Ooh, sweet Polaroids. Hey, we've definitely been around. Well, at least we got a picture from Riley and Eleanor. And one of their giant gnomes. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex Chen. So at least Eleanor doesn't hate me. That's a plus. Oh, wow. That's the end of the game. Wow. Yo, part of me did kind of hope we were going to get to see Alex perform one last song, but I guess I could kind of see why, I guess I can kind of see why they uh, didn't do that. I don't know. Leave it to the mystery to see how that went. Leave it to the imagination to see how her uh, burgeoning music career would start to go. I do wonder why Steph wasn't performing with her, because the whole thing is that they were going to play music together. They definitely left together. I don't know. I guess Alex wanted to do some solo gigs. It's entirely possible. But honestly, I... 
I loved this game. I really did. I'm not just saying that because this was a sponsored playthrough, all right? I did love this game. The visuals, as always, just fucking spectacular. Great music on the soundtrack, despite the fact that this video, like all the others, is going to get third-party claimed like a motherfucker for all the licensed songs. I don't even care. I need the soundtrack for these games because they're always good. Um, and... This game fucking... Just so many times it just fucking forced me to confront certain things that were not the exact same as some of my own experiences, but were definitely reminiscent of some of my experiences. And, uh, not gonna lie, a uh, little bit uncomfortable at times to have to do that kind of introspection, but, you know. I guess if we never look that far in ourselves, we can't really start to heal from the things that fucked us up that way in the first place, right? You just leave it there untouched it's just gonna rot away at you forever and that's just not great so I don't know man loved Alex as a character love being able to reconnect with someone from a previous game like Steph and be able to like romance her was a nice bonus I'm like I understand that like maybe it would have been too easy to have everybody be on your side in the town council meeting and I'm sure there's things I could have done to make that more possible but like uh, it just sucks that even after everything I did there were still people who weren't on my side there you know but like, honestly, the fact that Ducky was on my side, that's a win for me. That's a win for me, because I do like Ducky. He's he's cool. He's cool as fuck. Um, not sure how I ended up with the fucking cop, of all people, on my side in the end, but... You know. I mean, having him there without fear of Typhon... To present the evidence on the USB stick, that was a lifesaver, because, uh... You know, if it was... If it was up to, like, Eleanor and fucking Charlotte, I probably would not have been as uh, in as good of a position to, like, sway people against Ched. And also, fuck Jed. I, I don't know why I said Ched there. <laughs> fuck Jed, though. Like, like, on the one hand, I can understand that he's not, like, you know, this super villain. He's not, it's not like, oh... I let my men die for the money. Ha ha. He's not over there twirling his amazing mustache like he's fucking Snidely Whiplash or something. There was a reason why he did what he did. And, you know, it's tough to be in that position because you don't know what somebody would do in his, in his position. It doesn't make it right, though. You know? He still has to live with the fact that he let seven of his teammates die just to save the people that he could save. Even if he did ultimately do the right thing and prevent more deaths than there would have been had he stayed there and tried to save more people, those are still deaths that are on him because ultimately it was because of a decision that he made to not stop a dig that was already going south. I'm sorry, Jeb, but that's still on you. And then you cover up that story by fucking... You know, telling people, oh, my team had 19 men on it. Wink, wink. And let yourself be portrayed as, like, this local hero for ages. And, like... And you just, like, you know, preside over a whole town, basically, based on a lie. Yes, you did save some of your men, but... Many men also died because of poor decisions that you made. Including Alex and Gabe's dad. And then... And then... You fucking let fucking Typhon... Bury the fucking evidence of what happened down there. Just to save your own ass. Because you couldn't handle the mistake that you made. 
that led to people dying. Like, I really, I'm still worried about how this is gonna fucking affect, uh, not Jed, but fucking Ryan. Because you saw up there on the rooftop, he was not doing great. He was really not doing great. I'm worried about him. Like, yeah, he kind of, he kind of started giving me shit there at the town council meeting because he didn't believe me initially. Which I can understand because his entire image of his father is this swell, heroic, you know, well-traveled, knowledgeable, kind, paternal man who takes care of everybody and kind of knows what's best for the people around him. I get that it's hard to shatter that image of somebody, but, like, man, he's, Ryan's got to be dealing with so much right now, and I just hope he has a support system in place that can help him through it. You know, especially if Steph and I kind of just fucked off to tour the world, you know? Ah, <sighs> man. I need some water after all that. Hopefully you're all drinking water as well. I really do love this game. I don't know if I would quite put this past Life is Strange 1. If we're gonna go by... If we're gonna go by, like, the games in the series... I think I would... This isn't, like, an official ranking list or anything, so... Take this with a grain of salt, and I reserve my right to change this at literally any time I so choose. But, like... I feel like... I feel like Life is Strange 1 is still tops for me, but this is a very close second. Which is saying a lot because, like, number two for me was probably Before the Storm, and then Life is Strange 2. With, uh, I guess if you want to count Adventures of Captain Spirit as, like, a full game, even though it was basically just, like, a playable demo, like a mid -quel, like, that would be at the bottom. But, like, this definitely takes an easy, easy number two spot as far as, like, ranking the games in the series. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I would bump this up higher. Maybe it might tie or even overtake Life is Strange 1 if I think about it more and, like, watch more playthroughs and really, you know, get to digest things and really think about things more. It's entirely possible, but... I do love this game. It's definitely one of my favorites. Certainly one of my favorite games I've played this year, for absolute sure. Love Alex as a character. Absolute bisexual disaster, much like yours truly, so... That probably helps a bit, I'm not gonna lie. Um... And I think I said this in episode one, but, like... Maybe not for the exact same reasons? in the exact same context, but I do honestly kind of resonate a lot. Like, I do relate a lot, I should say. A lot of what she was going through as far as, like, feelings of rejection or being broken or not being wanted, like, that resonated with me a lot. So, uh, that's why certain parts of this game are kind of rough for me, but, you know, I think that's the power of, like, a lot of media is that they can give you these characters and these stories that you can kind of look at and be like, I see myself in this, you know, both ups and downs. I see my good qualities and my bad, my strengths and my weaknesses through these characters, through these stories that are being told. And it's okay to use that to kind of look inward and be like, wow, I am kind of fucked, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes I just gotta... Just gotta take my own advice and be like... You know what, man? It's okay to not be okay. I really do have to take my own advice sometimes. And I'm probably gonna forget it literally first thing tomorrow when I do something stupid and start just beating myself up for the rest of the day. Or something else comes up that just sets me off, but... 
I don't know. I'm clearly rambling at this point. Both, both because I fucking just had a lot to unpack through this game, and also because I'm trying to kill time for the credits, because I do want to give the credits their just due, you know? A lot of people worked on this game. It's a lovely, wonderful, amazing game, and the people who worked on it do deserve to have their credits shown and their names shown, because so much work into this. Also gotta really give a special shout out to Erica Mori for her performance as Alex Chen, and also for uh, MXM Tune for Alex's singing voice during those periods where she sang. Excellent work by both of you, and by, and by everybody else in the voice cast, obviously. Not wanting to cut anybody out there. I just... I love this game. I really do. I really love this fucking game. I can't wait to play Wavelengths. I'm gonna hold that off for a few days just because... You know, there's stuff I want to do for the channel. Some of you may already know what that is based on the community tab post I put up a couple days ago. But, you know, I, um, I absolutely want to play Wavelengths. I may do repeat playthroughs, not here on the channel, obviously, but just in my own time. Just to see uh, how things could have turned out differently. Or I'll probably just end up watching a bunch of playthroughs on YouTube and Twitch. Which is what I did for the other games after I played them. So... I don't know, man. This game just really cool. Life is Strange is just one of my favorite game franchises. I love story-driven, character-driven games like this. I love being able to actually affect things with choices and feeling like things actually matter by and large. Like, I'm sure there's some decisions that didn't really change much as far as the overall plot, but just knowing that I have some control over how the world changes and how, like, people change around me because of the, the actual decisions that I make minute to minute, that's really cool. Those are the kind of games I really like. I think that's also why I liked games like Infamous, just because, you know, obviously that was much more action-oriented, being a game about having superpowers, but, like... You know, there was a morality system in there, and people would react to you differently based on what you did, and certain parts of the story would change based on what you did. Just, the point I'm trying to make here is that games that give you a, an actual degree of control on how things happen are some of my favorites. Which is why I think I was so drawn to Life is Strange, you know? And, again, obviously... The beautiful visuals, the amazing soundtrack, and just the compelling plot twists and everything like that, that always helps too. These are some of my favorite games, dude. I, I just... <sighs> and I really appreciate anybody who actually watched this playthrough all the way through, you know? Because I realized that, you know, me putting up like two, three hour videos, it's probably a lot to sit through all at once. But, you know, I, for a game like this that obviously is split into chapters, I like putting the full video up. Just so there's not like a, like a cut in between anywhere. There's not like a delay in the parts. You know, you have to load up another video. For a game like this that's split into chapters, I do like putting the full video up at once. Because that's how I like to consume these kind of games when I watch them and, uh, in other people's playthroughs, you know? Oh, great. Just more Gabe and Charlotte photos to make me sad. Um, uh, you know, I, I do like just like consuming an entire episode at once with a game like this. Obviously, people can do what they want. You know, obviously, I think there's a certain point where maybe more parts would be more beneficial. Because, you know, maybe there'd be some parts of this game you could monetize because of... You know, the fact that there's not licensed music in every minute second. But, I don't know. Clearly, I'm just trying to fill time so I can let the credits roll. Because I do want to give the credits their their fair shake. You know? 
Plus, I'm gonna get third party claim no matter what I do, so. May as well just let it rock. Drink some more water. <sighs> That's some good water, man. So how are you guys doing in the comments? <laughs> I mean, if this was a lot for me to play, there was probably a lot for you guys to watch it and like not have any control over what happens. Some of you probably have watched multiple playthroughs and you're like, no, don't pick that, you're gonna get this ending. Ah, nah, damn it. I guarantee you somebody's in the comments thinking like, wow, this guy picked all the wrong choices. That's not what I would have done. I can't even judge because I get like that sometimes. I know, it's something I shouldn't do, but... There's like a... I think there's a certain degree of... There's a certain degree of enjoyment and like, knowing that you're watching someone who's like, kind of on the same wavelength as you as far as these choices go. Which is the appeal of watching somebody play one of these games. Because... You know, you like it when people are kind of on the same line of thought as you, and uh, you like seeing those decisions play out, and you like seeing how they react to things that that you saw in your playthrough, because it's a choice that you made, you know? My god, a lot of people worked on this game, which I would think is the case, considering how well it turned out. I think it turned out pretty well, you know? Yo, know, here's another thing for the comments. Tell me what your personal ranking list for the Life is Strange games is. Are you like me, where it's like Life is Strange 1 followed very closely by True Colors, even though True Colors could overtake 1 at any point, depending on how I feel somewhere in the next few days or so? And then uh, Before the Storm, then 2, then Captain Spirit, if we're considering that a full game? Because I know people who probably actually like 2 a lot more than uh, than some of the other entries. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I didn't like 2. I think you can go back and watch my playthrough of my VODs from uh, when I was streaming on Twitch. When I was playing that game. Like, I actually really enjoyed 2. I just don't know if... I just don't know if... Uh, Sean and Daniel resonated with me quite as much as, like, you know, a Max Caulfield or a Chloe Price or an Alex Chen in this case. You know? Maybe just because so much of the game revolved around the idea of, like, brotherhood and family and... You know, for me, there's just so few members of my family I actually keep in contact with for various reasons. But, and it's not to say I didn't like 2. Like I said, I, I love 2. I definitely liked it more than Captain Spirit, for damn sure. I think, I don't know, Captain Spirit, I'm, I'm still kind of salty about the way they did the fucking phone puzzle for Chris's dad's phone. Just because there was no indication that it was going to be, like, I understand if it was... I understand that the password was supposed to be Hot Dog Man, but there was like no indication of what that would have been in numbers. And I'm forgetting the term for when you write uh, letters completely as numbers like that. There's a term for it and I'm forgetting it. But I don't know. I guess. I guess because, in part because it was so short and also because of how the phone puzzle turned out to be just so unnecessarily convoluted. 
Maybe I just didn't like it as much. That's not to say I straight up didn't like it. I just didn't like it as much as 2. But, you know, if you're doing a... a, a if you're doing an arbitrary ranking list of video games, then one's gonna come last, I guess. You know something I'm really looking forward to, though? I mentioned this before, but, uh... I'm looking forward to seeing what other people pick. I really want to see some of the other outcomes and results and endings now. You know, now that I've played this for myself. Just because, like, obviously... Just because, obviously, I, I've done this ending for myself and I kind of want to see how everything kind of ended up for other people. And I really, really held myself back from watching even just, like... The episodes of other people's playthroughs of episodes that I've already done. Just because I would want to experience somebody's full playthrough for myself, you know? As a whole, you know? With the knowledge of what I got at the end and see if they're building towards that same way or if they're going to get something different. It's going to be really interesting to see what people picked. Like, I... Like, I wonder how many people... Well, I guess we're going to see that in the world stats, technically. Um, but I do wonder how many people ended up, like, romancing Steph, or maybe they went for Ryan. I guess it's also possible that they went for neither. You know? Uh, yes, here we go with the license music. A.K.A. the shit that's going to prevent me from making ad revenue unless I can successfully dispute the claims. Which is probably not likely. But it's fine. Like, I completely had the choice. It's my own fault. I realize that. They literally implemented an option in this game to turn off the licensed music for the sake of content creation. So if it ends up that I can't make any ad revenue off of this series, then it's fine. It's my own fault because the option is there to turn it off. And they included it specifically for that reason. You know, because of fucking DMCA shit. And I appreciate that. I really do. So for the people that, like, absolutely, you know, rely on content creation for their sole source of revenue and they want to play this game, that option's there for them. And that's cool. I love that, I love that, you know, Don't Nod and Deck Nine did that for these games. But, I just... <sighs> music really... Music really is such an important part of this game and this franchise for me, so I could not have it on. So, I hope you guys appreciate that. I hope you guys appreciate that I left the music on, you know? Because, like, I'm probably not gonna make a fucking cent off of any of these videos. So, I hope you guys do really love and appreciate that I left the music on, just because, you know, it would mean that I, uh, it would mean that I get the immersion of, like, having that music in there to properly set the mood and everything. And then you guys would have that too, watching the playthrough, you know? Like, that's going to be one thing that I think is going to, like, maybe, I don't know if frustrate me is the right word, but maybe put me off about watching other people's playthroughs. Aw. You know what, Deck Nine? You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you, Deck Nine. You made a pretty good video game there, I tell you what. Alright, uh, wow. Not as, not as decisive as I thought. Bit more of a split on the final choice. Um, so obviously I was in the minority, actually. For hitting the road to play my music. Huh. Interesting. Now, let's see. Wow, I was in the minority. I was in the minority for condemning Jed. Holy shit. I was way in the minority. I was in the slight uh, slight majority for claiming to fear not or claiming to not fear my emotions. What are words? How oh, some members of the council was actually the majority decision. Wow. Damn. Only 4% got none, so... 
At least I didn't fuck up that bad. Alex wanted to belong somewhere in the future. Okay. Mm. More than wanting to play music in her future, even though that's what I eventually ended up going with. Um... Took some time to reflect in the apartments. Alex didn't see Ryan after the vote. Oh. Oh, you know what? He probably could have been the one that came into the apartment. And then, like, if we had gone maybe down the romance path with him. Or maybe there was some other way he could have come to the apartment. And, like, you know, asked Alex to forgive him for not believing her initially. Oh, I guess I could have also not been ready to forgive him at all. And he could have stood by me. Shit. Somehow, Alex not seeing Ryan was the majority, and that's where I wound up. Wow, Charlotte. <laughs> okay, so... Alex not having Charlotte's help was, like, the pretty big majority there. Which, I think... It was probably in part... Because of me sapping her anger. But that's it, it's also entirely possible that I may have fucking wound up that way anyway. See, the one I'm interested in is the 2% one. Charlotte believed Alex but couldn't help. Because I bet you that would have happened if I told her to sign the affidavit in which she shouldn't have... Uh, in which she wouldn't have pressed charges against Typhon and taken the big lump sum of money. So, huh... Yeah, obviously, you know, me fucking, yeah, I guess me fucking telling Riley about Eleanor's Alzheimer's is what led to Eleanor, you know, thinking that I needed, like, fucking psychiatric help. I don't want to say it was wrong. I don't want to say it was wrong for me to tell Riley about Eleanor's, you know, Alzheimer's. I don't want to say that. That's not the thought line I want to go down because that... I still feel like that was the right thing to do. It just sucks that... Like, it just sucks that... Like... That, you know, kind of got... Turned around into Eleanor... Wanting to help me in the same way that I helped her. But, like, her not knowing the context... And not believing that I knew what I saw... And what I saw Jed do... You know? And I don't blame her for that. I don't blame her for that. She can only go off of the information that she had. And obviously the experience she had with me helping her out and helping to keep her condition under wraps until I told Riley. You know? Until I eventually fucking told Riley the truth about it before she left. That obviously, you know... I guess, inspired Eleanor to try and help me in the same way, but, man. Oh, joy, at least I got Pike on my side. Woo. <laughs> See, Ducky's the one that I wanted, but wow. Huh. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that there was more of a split for Ducky when you consider that, um, you know, Obviously, I don't think a lot of people... There, There's there's every chance that people could have completely missed Ducky during the Spring Festival and not had that moment with him, uh, with him reminiscing about Tabitha. And also, from Diane's fucking files, Jed apparently... Or Ducky apparently voted with Jed in basically every instance before on the town council. So if I hadn't had that moment with Ducky, I don't think I would have been able to sway him on my side. Wow. Yep, Ryan believed Jed during the vote. As much as I want to make the joke that 69% is in fact not nice. Because it means I had one less person on my side. Because Ryan didn't want to believe his dad was an asshole. Yep, and Ryan and I didn't get together obviously because I never pursued that path. And that was... Oh, Wow. It's actually tied. <laughs> For the possibilities with Steph, the majority is tied at 35% each, 
And either one of them involves being with Steph. Which means at least 70% of people who play this game around the world at least have enough good taste to be with Steph. <laughs> you know what? I respect it. Well, that's it. That's the main story done for Life is Strange True Colors. That was a lot. Uh, that was a lot to take in, a lot to process. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really still not sure I made the right choice in a lot of places. But then again, that's what these games do to you. They give you a set of choices, and then somehow every single one feels wrong at some point. But, I don't know, man. Who this game brought up a lot that maybe I wasn't too keen on thinking about all that deeply about myself. Um, like, is it something I have to do eventually, you know? And hopefully all of you out there, if you're if you're watching this and maybe something kind of resonated with you, I, I hope you're alright, you know? I mean, I know in the end it's just a video game, quote-unquote, but when the writing is done well, when the characters are done well, when, when everything's just done so well, like, it can hit a really sensitive spot, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, if, if anything resonated with you, just take some time to do some reflection, Take care of yourselves. Drink some water. Like, please, just drink some fucking water, everybody. Um, thank you once again to Square Enix and Rainmaker GG for sponsoring the playthrough uh, by providing a code for this game. Sorry about the stammer. <laughs> and yes, I am going to be playing Wavelengths eventually. I do want to do a couple things for this channel first. But Wavelengths will be a thing. Trust me. I do want to see that Steph side story, but for right now, I'm going to go and edit this and then put it up, which obviously will be done by the time you see it, and I don't know, I'm going to think about life for a while, because <laughs> my god is it strange, but anyway, thanks for watching everybody, leave a like if you liked it, subscribe for more of stuff like this in the future maybe, leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite part is. Tell me what your favorite character was. Just comment to say hi. Just whatever. And I'll see you in the next video, friendos.